situation that you just have witnessed is a situation that happens every single day here in the Netherlands and Germany but in Europe but actually around the whole world. The police chasing a high-speed drug convoy in the border region. In this case this was the border between the Netherlands and Germany. Hey Siri, alle lichten aan. But what happens when a Dutch police officer crosses the border to Germany in his pursuit? Well, exactly at the border situation, he loses connection with his network. As in Germany, they're communicating through the BDBOS Tetra network. And in the Netherlands, they communicate through the C2000 Tetra network. Two Tetra networks with no connection between the two networks, unfortunately. However, the Dutch and German police created a solution for this problem. They organized the so-called VTP units, where a Dutch police officer and a German police officer are both in one vehicle to manage the situation. But let's be realistic. The best way to get this problem solved is through technology, right? So when crossing the border, it's normal that there is no network available between two countries. We all have experienced that situation, of course. But you don't want to have this situation happening for police officers who are crossing borders. So in the Nordics, for example, they are already working through an ISI, an inter-system interface. That means that different networks are connected with each other so that public safety actors are able to communicate with each other. However, in the rest of Europe, this is definitely not the situation. You might experience that in one country they're using a different type of network than in another country. Or you have the situation where there are two networks from different vendors, so it's vendor locked, they don't communicate with each other. Um, you know, it's not interoperable and that is just the problem. Besides this police scenario, there are also other scenarios possible when communication between public safety actors is not possible in the border region. Try to think about a situation where there is a cross-border natural disaster or a rescue operation concerning a barge of irregular immigrants. These are just a few examples where in many cases public safety agencies are not able to communicate with one another. And this is exactly where the Broadway project comes into place. This project started around April 2017. It is currently in the second phase and as part of this phase in July 2020 the group of procurers awarded contracts to three consortia that met all of the technological and quality requirements of the call-off competition at the end of phase one. Project two runs until May 2021 and successful critical communication solutions prototypes are to become pilot systems at the end of phase three early 2022. All right, so one of these consortia is led by Leonardo from Italy, and this is where it gets interesting. An Italian and a Finnish company working together in one major critical communications project. However, these two companies do have more in common, as you might think in the first place. For this project, Leonardo also teamed up with major players in the field of critical communications like mobile award winner and winner of the French MOI tender for tactical networks, Atonet, Telespacho from France and Vodafone from Portugal, amongst others. In order to get more familiar with the project, I'm honored to speak to Giorno Marjava from Bitium, Claudio Becchetti and Angelo Benvenuto from Leonardo. In the coming 20 minutes, you will get answers on what's so unique about those two companies working together. What have BTM and Leonardo have in common and how the BTM Tough Mobile 2 smartphone would fit the need of many of the public safety actors in Europe taking in consideration that it's not a traditional like PMR radio. So let's quickly go online and meet the gentleman over there. Thank you very much for joining this so important call. 
Um, I, I think a lot of people in the world don't know exactly what we are talking about, but this is extremely important when we talk about PPDR, Public Protection Disaster Relief, right, in Europe. Uh, so thank you for being in the call. Actually, I want to kick off straight forward with the question to Jarno, why you guys are working together. What is so special? What is so unique about the cooperation between Bitium and Leonardo? Okay, thank you, Gert, for the question. Uh, uh, we actually have a, um, already a history with Leonardo by working together in other areas. We are both uh, companies who make uh, products for the military and defense uh, agencies. And uh, for example, we have been cooperating in this uh, pan-European ESO program, which is defining a, a joint military uh, waveform for the, for the tactical communications. And now we are cooperating in this Broadway um, project for uh, public safety and, and, and LTE. Um, and our product offering is uh, very complementary. So, so we focus on the devices, handheld devices uh, mostly, but also um, for the um, uh, security, mobile security solutions. And those are complementing the, the complementing Leonardo's offering. Um, and and uh, this way, I, I think it's a perfect uh, partnership uh, for this program. All right, Angelo, I've got a question actually for you. Um, what is the view of Leonardo with regards to broadband communications going forward? Uh, we actually talk about the new era about broadband. Is it for public safety? Broadband is gaining more and more importance. Uh, new tenders, uh, even those related to narrowband networks, uh, are requiring broadband interoperability. 4G and in future 5G network are becoming a reality and what is available in commercial world is also migrating to the mission critical environment. So we think that there is a, a, a scenario uh, where the uh, broadband component has to integrate uh, with the, the narrowband because narrowband is still uh, holding the scene for at least several years and uh, integration is the key to have uh, those uh, uh, two technology mix in a, a successful way. When I'm talking integration, I'm not talking about uh, simply protocol or technology. I'm talking about an integration that uh, involves the whole ecosystem, that involves control room, that involves application, that involves devices. And those integration has to be built uh, upon the real requirement of the end users that are moving, trying to cope with what the technology make it possible. And so, uh, usability, ease of use, but also effectiveness in application, in control room and in devices is what we need to bring in order to create, uh, let's say, uh, the, the ecosystem for the networks of the present and the future. All right. Okay, that's that's clear. And when we talk about devices, uh, Giardo, I'll go back to you actually, because your British is, is a provider of secure, rugged, uh, mobile devices, uh, especially secure devices. Uh, how do we see that a evolution going on? Because I cannot imagine that everybody in Europe on public safety agencies are able to use your device because they have specific requirements. How would you manage that? Okay, yeah, that is an excellent question. And, and, uh, and for sure, there's no one size fits all uh, type uh, 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 development. So certainly, certainly different end users. They have unique requirements uh, when it comes to accessories, when it comes to devices, and and also applications. Uh, um, so uh, how we handle that at uh, Bitium is that uh, we of course offer a customization of our products in terms of software, in terms of uh, specialized ac accessories, and and also. Uh, we realize that uh, it's not maybe the product for all the end users. So we tend to focus on those user groups that mostly value security, uh, value a device that is not only ruggedized, but also discreet. So it looks like a normal smartphone, feels like a normal smartphone, so that uh, um, uh, you cannot really tell that it has a specialized, highly specialized device. <laughs> Oh,
Claudia, I've got a question for you. A very simple, straightforward question because we would like to understand a little bit more about the position of Leonardo in this broadband, a Broadway project. Can you explain a little bit more on that? Right, Leonardo is uh, the leader of the consortium of Broadway. Uh, Broadway, let's say, it's the first time that, uh, let's say, 58 end users join together to create uh, a project where they want to standardize communication for PPDDR uh, in Europe. And let's say it has an impact worldwide. So they, they managed to create this project uh, to create uh, a new standard with communication, with uh, uh, terminals, with control rooms. And Leonardo is one of the uh, three consortia that uh, are inside this project, one of, of the three left consortia that are still alive. Uh, and that's very important for us because, in our opinion, this kind of project really have a very good impact in worldwide in terms of yes, communication. Yes, and, and when we talk about Leonardo and Bitium, there are many more other companies involved in, in the project that you are leading, right? Right. Uh, our consortia, I guess it's unique uh, uh, inside this project because we have uh, Bitium and we are the only consortia that has a, a manufacturer, a device manufacturer. Going back to the devices, so in this case, in this specific case, what are the unique requirements for mm. the Broadway project compared to other projects that you guys are running? Yes. Uh, well, of course, there are some commonalities between a Broadway project and other public safety LTE programs that are currently ongoing. But uh, I, I would say that Broadway is still unique uh, in terms of uh, fully relying on uh, open standards uh, and, and uh, also building an ecosystem that is fully interoperable in terms of devices, applications, networks. There's also the uh, international roaming and when you look at the current market for public safety and, and for example, Tetra roaming, that's only happening in Northern Scandinavia in Lapland uh, between three countries. But now we are building that uh, to 11 countries. Um, and, and if we look at the devices, uh, in addition to the uh, standard based solutions and interfaces that are, are there in the device, um, uh, there's of course the racketization. It has to be last uh, very uh, heavy usage, um, but also you need to have a long product lifetime so that you can bring in the new functionalities that uh, will be uh, will be deployed in Broadway uh, in the longer term. And, and finally, there are security requirements uh, which are uh, actually pretty uh, pretty uh, comprehensive in in Broadway. And uh, uh, we, are, we are happy that uh, those requirements are also included in the Broadway initiative. Finally, it's now time to get interoperability up and running, is it? Yeah, exactly. I, I fully agree. And that's why this is so important, I guess, this project. Yeah, it, it, it's important because uh, it, set, it can make set the standard for, uh, let's say, a, a new uh, multinational mission critical networks and uh, taking advantage of uh, let's say uh, a technology that uh, arriving from the telephonic world uh, that uh, is born with the multinational interoperability with the built-in roaming and so on it may be solved one of the problem that has characterized narrowband networks that were built on top of maybe more local requirement and so it was decided that maybe uh, interoperability roaming agreements uh, as well as uh, multi-vendor interoperability was uh, not uh, to be totally enforced. But it is not the case with LTE that is born with the built-in interoperability since the day one. So hopefully it would be also a solution of this problem. With your knowledge of the industry, can you tell me a little bit more about the generic role of the broadband devices into this new world? How do you see that? Yeah, they have, uh, um, let's say, uh, an important role because at the end of the day, what the end user has in hand is a device. Uh, the end user doesn't see the network, the end user sees the terminal. So 
the device is important and the application that uh, is uh, on top of the device is important as well. Device need to be uh, easy to use, need to be robust, need to be secure and uh, need to have all the features uh, that uh, they have to, uh, let's say, uh, to, um, to respect. I mean, uh, a clear PTT, uh, 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 easy to use PTT button since they, at the end of the day, the PTT uh, way of communicating is still the dominant uh, one and uh, the possibility to, 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 to be used uh, and free but uh, uh, also, uh, since we are uh, talking about uh, multimedia application, uh, a, a good visibility of the screens, uh, a good resolution, uh, and the possibility to have, of course, uh, a crystal clear communication, so a good level of the audio and so on. The application that is what we are focusing is important as well, because it has to be easy to use, it has to be intuitive, it has to provide the right control in the right position and it has to provide all the needed functionality. It has to give the possibility to switch between voice and multimedia communication. It had to provide the user for the uh, maps because uh, and now the position is becoming a new killer application. And so again, and it has to be secure. So it has to provide secure communication. And that is where BGM came into place when we talk about all of these features? Yeah, B B B in our view it is, uh, uh, let's say, supplying excellent devices in terms of features, in terms of robustness, in terms of security. And they are the ideal complement of our application, of our MCS application that we specially developed for the broadband communication. Uh, that uh, provide uh, uh, intuitiveness uh, and uh, uh, all the features that I was mentioning before. Okay, and and when you talk about this uh, this 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 team building with Bitium, uh, how does that work? You're the consortium leader, so I guess you have to pick and choose the right partner in this case. Regarding Bitium, uh, we we got Bitium because it was the I mean the best uh, inside the, uh, our arena. So, and just to go back with the previous point of Angelo, I would say a point. Uh, we got uh, in Broadway a demonstration right uh, one one week ago, and 80% of the time of the demonstration was based uh, on terminals. Uh, and users uh, completely were completely focused on terminals, but that's obvious because they what they got is the terminal in their daily operational life. So, and the other part should be considered that we are talking about terminals, and we say, well, technology should be simple. It's 4G, 5G, it's simple, but it's simple for children, but it's not simple for the application. It's not simple, let's say, for the end user to understand, because they have their terminal, simple terminal they use every in everyday life, and they say, why I cannot have this stuff? Well, but it's different because they have to have a reliable terminal 99.999% of the time. They have to have a voice clear uh, all the time, especially in, 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 in when there is crisis. And of course, they have not time to go around Googling in the terminal because they have to do something else and they can and must have a connection and talking. So that's completely different approach. It, it, it should actually be, uh, Jarno, intuitive, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And and you also have to consider the fact that uh, these end users that we are talking about, they are working in 11 different countries that is covering the whole Broadway project. And if you look at the police officers in Lapland, they are using snowmobiles when they are driving around. And, and down in Italy, uh, you are probably using motorcycles. <laughs> uh, so there are different, different uses, uh, different users. Uh, uh, and, and the device has to work in all situations, as well as the application. As, as Leonardo said, it's really critical that that is also easy to use and intuitive. The project is up and running. Uh, that should be finished in about one year. Is that right, Claudio? Well, in April, we will have our final demonstration of prototype, and then hopefully we will go into pilot uh, one year. And after this one year, we will have public ten European public tender, so it goes live. 
No, let's say in 2022, 23, we go live in Europe. Oh, you go live in Europe. Yes, we. Yes, yes. exactly. You know, <laughs> the consortium. You know system. Yes, the consortium, right. of course, but also the end users want to do the tender based on, on this standard and on certified Broadway applications and solutions. So from that moment, five years down the line, where, where is BTM at that moment? Where we want to be, of course, is that uh, there are uh, lots of uh, countries in Europe who, are, who have been already using Broadway. They are using Broadway devices and all those customers and end users who need to handle classified information as part of their work, they would be using Bitium. That's, that is our dream. All right. Thank you very much. And Angelo, for you, for, for Leonardo. Okay, again, uh, five years is a very, very long period, but uh, uh, we, we think that uh, we may uh, stay on, on, our role, on our role to provide secure and reliable communication to uh, end users, uh, leveraging on the, the technology, so uh, exploiting our system integration capability just uh, to uh, provide uh, the best solution as possible using the, the technology that will be in place. Maybe in five, five years we will talk about 5G and not 4G, but uh, however, uh, we, we our aim is to provide a reliable and secure and effective solution uh, and to, to mission critical community. I would add a point from end user point of view. In five years, I would expect that uh, uh, police forces go around the cross border without problem. This is uh, an emergency and they will not have a communication problem anymore. That's my vision for five years. It looks like the Leonardo Consortium together with Bitum are well positioned within the Broadway project. In less than four months, the consortium will know if they have completed this phase successfully and if the consortium is able to submit their offer to the next field trial phase. To my understanding, the proposition of the Leonardo Bitium Corporation makes much sense, especially when taking into account the proposition of the Bitium Tough Mobile 2 radio to be used for public safety entities. Maybe Bitium is not having the same background in public safety communications like the traditional PMR manufacturers. However, there is one major point that I would like to bring up. When choosing the right radio for critical communications, it's extremely important to take the user's experience into consideration. So it's very important on how easy it is to use the device instead of the numbers of buttons and features that are embedded into the radio. And with that, using this device, together with the right accessories operating on the reliable and secure Leonardo infrastructure, Public safety entities in Europe should be able to communicate with each other efficiently and without any flaws. <laughs>